Today I'm making a video about the number one personal finance topic that everyone is asking about, retirement savings. Just kidding, retirement savings is not the number one topic, it's probably something like Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Single word, Doge, it's up by 72%. I, you know, I, I don't even follow this or know what's going on with it. Yo, Dogecoin is up! But retirement savings should be. According to Student Loan Hero, only about a half of women actually have a retirement savings account. And on top of that, women have half the amount saved as men do in the retirement savings account. What is so alarming about these statistics is that women are living longer and longer than men and women are retiring actually earlier than men. So I think it's really important that us as women feel informed about our personal finance situation and have a plan for our retirement. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny Park. Thank you so much for watching. About a month ago, I shared a personal finance video with seven tips that helped me and my husband get out of debt and how we paid off $120,000 in less than three years. I received a lot of meaningful comments and messages and people reaching out with saying things like that the video inspired them to make a budget for the first time or that they feel less ashamed with how much debt that they're carrying and feel motivated to keep going. So many of those comments meant a lot to me because not only was this my first personal finance video, but it was actually my first YouTube video. So it really meant a lot to know that these videos were worthwhile and meaningful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't watched it yet and are intrigued, I'll link it somewhere here for you to find. In this video, I'm excited to share why it's so important to get started on saving for retirement today, the different types of retirement savings accounts out there so you feel informed on where your money is going, how much you should be contributing to retirement and how to know if you're on track and a few other tips to just continue the momentum as you are on your journey. But before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. The thumbs up really helps me grow my YouTube channel and it really helps the YouTube algorithm serve this video to other people who are interested in increasing their financial literacy. And without further ado, let's get started. So I started this video saying that women are less confident about the retirement savings plans and are in fact saving less than men are. I wanted to unpack that a little bit to understand the relationship between women and personal finances in America. There are a few reasons that came up of why women are saving less than men. So the first reason being that women are still traditionally the predominant caregiver once they start having children, once they start having a family. And what that means is that women are leaving the workforce sooner than men, and they're often leaving the workforce during their high earner years. They're leaving in their early 30s, mid 30s, really the season in this career where they could be making the most income, which inhibits how much they're able to save. The second reason why women are saving less than men is of course, the gender pay gap. The gender pay gap is real and women are making on average 80 cents to the dollar that a man makes. And if you look at women of color, that number is even worse, the gap is even bigger. And then the third reason that's kind of tied to that that I had never heard about is the gender investment gap. Not only are women paid less than men, women are also investing later and later than men. And when women are investing later than men, that means that their money isn't working as hard for them. They're missing out on so much compound interest and the less that women talk about investing, they just assume that other people aren't doing it. So I think it's really important that us as women talk about investing, have plans for retirement and get started. So first I'll talk about why it's so important to start saving for retirement today. If you are just graduating college, I know it's graduation season, so a lot of people are graduating, or maybe you're in your early 20s, just received your first paycheck, or even your late 20s and early 30s, and you might be thinking, retirement is so far away, I can start saving later, I'll make more money later, I'll start saving then. And I totally empathize with that. I know how it feels when you have so many other short-term goals that you really want to reach and saving for something long-term just feels like a derailer. But actually right now is the best time to get started for saving for retirement. And if you are in your early 20s, you're so lucky because this is the perfect time to get started because what you have now that you'll never get back later is time. And what time allows you to do is take advantage of compound interest. If you're unfamiliar with compound interest, essentially what that is, it is when your money is growing exponentially with interest building upon itself over time. It's when your money is growing upon itself and making more money and really just making money as you sleep at that point. I love good news, love good news. I just love good news. <laughs> so what is exactly a retirement savings account and what are the different options out there? In general, a retirement savings account is actually a form of an investment account. It is made up of stocks and bonds and other investments that grow over time. 
But what's so unique and special about retirement savings account than any other investment account, than any other investment, including Tesla, including Apple, is that it has tax advantages. What those tax advantages are differ based on your account, and I'll talk about that in a second. The retirement savings account is actually an incentive from the government to get you started in investing. There are a few different retirement savings accounts out there, and so I'll go over some of the main ones. The first one, like I mentioned, is the traditional 401k. A 401k is only available if it's offered through your employer, and it's a plan where you contribute a portion of your paycheck directly to this account using pre-tax dollars. Sometimes companies who do offer a traditional 401k will also offer an employer match. An employer match is essentially when they will match a certain percentage of your contributions into the 401k, meaning that they will also help you grow your retirement savings account. If that is something that your employer offers you, hallelujah, make sure that you are taking advantage of it and receiving the match that your company offers because that's really free money. And who doesn't want free money to really boost your retirement savings account? I just love goodness. <laughs> So like I mentioned, a traditional 401k is using pre-tax dollars. And so what that means is that it reduces your taxable income that year, which means you owe less in taxes that year, and it continues to grow over time. And when you are ready to withdraw, that's when your account will be taxed. The assumption that people like to have is that you are likely in a higher tax bracket now than you will be at 65, 67, when you are ready to withdraw from your account. So you are also in general paying less in taxes at that time. For a 401k, there is a maximum contribution amount. If you're under the age of 50, that amount is $19,500 in a calendar year. And that's still only your individual contributions. So you can individually contribute $19,500 and then your employer can match on top of that, which is really amazing and another great way to continue to increase your retirement savings account. If you hear $19,500 and that number sounds like wowza to you, don't worry. You can start small wherever you feel comfortable, 2%, 3%, 4%, and just every single year, just try to increase your contributions to get to that point. When you hear people say stuff like maximize your retirement, that's what they're saying is that they're maximizing how much they're legally able to contribute. And for a 401k, that's 19,500. The second account that's very common is the Roth IRA. And the IRA stands for individual retirement account. This is not through your employer, this is individual. And there's actually a lot of different IRAs available. For the purpose of this video, I'm only gonna talk about the Roth IRA. But the Roth IRA is different than the traditional 401k in that you are taking post-tax dollars and contributing into your account. So what's great about a Roth IRA is that it's taking post-tax dollars, it's growing and growing and growing. When you're ready to withdraw, it will not be taxed then. A really great way to think about a Roth IRA is, A, if you've already maxed out your 401k, it's great to then move on to a Roth IRA. If your company does not offer a traditional 401k match, then a Roth IRA is a really great way to get started. The Roth IRA does also have a maximum contribution amount, and that's $6,000 a calendar year if you are under the age of 50. It's also up to like April, I think, of the following year within the calendar. So you actually have a lot of time to make up and hit that 6,000 if you feel a little bit behind. The difference for a Roth IRA is that there is also a like income limit amount, which enables you to directly deposit into a Roth IRA. However, if you are above that threshold, there is still a way for you to legally participate, which is called the backdoor Roth IRA. The backdoor Roth IRA is another way, it's kind of like a loophole way for some reason that's like perfectly legal that allows you to still take advantage of the Roth IRA benefits. This is actually the first year that we are actually contributing to a backdoor Roth IRA. It's also the first year that I'm maximizing my 401k, which feels like a really big um, milestone for me. And so I'm now learning about a backdoor Roth IRA. And if that's something that you're interested in, I'm happy to, to uh, make a video about that as well. So there's two more retirement accounts that I'll quickly talk through, which is the simple and the SEP. If you are someone who is a freelancer, a small business owner, or self-employed, the simple or SEP are really great accounts for you to look into for ways that you can also be saving for retirement without going through your employer. So the next question is, how much should we be contributing to our retirement and how do we know if we have enough? This is a very personal question, really based on your personal situation, your personal income, how much your lifestyle costs. So in this section, I'll just give like, some just high level principles to help you kind of, I think just benchmark and use as goalposts. Hopefully it's helpful just to kind of evaluate and assess your situation. 
But I will first off start by saying that I think in general, we overestimate how much that we can rely on social security to cover for us. And I think we underestimate how much our lifestyle costs. For social security, I think if you are my generation or younger, so millennials, Gen Z, we really can't assume that social security will be enough to cover us or our lifestyle. And I know that's really unfortunate and kind of effed up that we live in a country with a government that relies on your individual situation and planning and knowledge to be saving for your retirement and have a plan there. But that is the reality today. And so I just call that out that I don't want us to feel, I think, shocked or unprepared and that we can be making steps right now to be saving for retirement because it is up to our individual planning because Social Security can only cover so much. The second part as it relates to our lifestyle, one, I think we underestimate how much retirement is going to cost us, but also inflation is something we have to take into account. What $100,000 is worth now or even a million dollars is worth now is not going to be the same in 10, 20, 30 years. It's not going to have the same spending power. And so it's really important that we also take that into account of knowing how much do we really need in retirement? How much will that really give us? So one in general, how much to contribute? It is recommended by Fidelity that you are contributing 15% of your pre-tax dollars to retirement. If you are not there yet, that's okay. I think just get started now and think of other ways that you can slowly increase it every single year. And I think just being mindful of it is always gonna be putting yourself in a situation better than you even think, just being aware. Okay, so the general age goalposts. So according to Fidelity, by the age of 30, it's recommended that you have the equivalent of your income saved. So if you make $50,000, you would have $50,000 saved. If you make $100,000, you would have $100,000 saved because it is all relative to your income, your situation, and your lifestyle. By the age of 40, you should have 3x of your income. And by age 50, you should have six times your income saved. So those, I think, 30, 40, 50 like goalposts are just helpful for you to assess if you're on track. If you're not exactly there yet, that's okay. Like I said, being aware, I think it's really important. And if you're not there yet, maybe this is a really good opportunity to look up for ways of how you can make sure that you're prioritizing your retirement. Next, I want to share some few tips that have helped me over the last eight years just to stay consistent and really maintain momentum. So the first step is once you are contributing, don't even look at it and don't ever touch it. So even if you see the stock market dip, don't freak out, don't touch it. Even if you need like emergency cash to buy something that you really want, don't even look at it. I think over the last eight years, I've really seen it continue to grow. And in the first like four years, it didn't feel like that momentous, but I think as you start to build the base over time, you start to see compound interest really work on itself. And I think that's when it feels really exciting. The second tip is make your savings automatic. So what's great about a 401k is that you make the decision once and it's taken out even before you see your paycheck. So it's a really great way to adjust to your income. But if you're doing an IRA or a SEP or simple, you do have to do it manually yourself to find a way on how to make your savings automatic. What's great and really important about making your savings automatic is that it's only one decision then. You're deciding one time that you are saving versus 26 times or 13 times or whatever it is. And those are 13, 26 opportunities for you to make an excuse, for you to delay retirement savings, which is so easy to do. So put yourself in a situation to succeed and just make that one choice. Third tip is increase your contributions every single year. I use Fidelity and through Fidelity, it allows you to to automatically increase your contributions. So for example, you can set it like, hey, every year I wanna increase my contributions by 1%, half a percent, whatever it is, but it's like a small action that you might even forget about, but know that it is automatically working for you behind the scenes. So those are some tips to kind of continue on your momentum over the next 10, 20, 30 years and kind of set it and forget it. So hopefully this overview was helpful. You feel a little bit more motivated to either A, open up a retirement savings account today or make it a bigger priority if you've already started. You feel a little bit informed of the different accounts that even exist out there and you feel a little bit more informed on whether or not you're on track. I think if you're watching this video already, I think that's a really good sign to show that you are interested and invested and want to take control of your personal finance situation. If you're interested in learning more or less about like how you should take some actions today, but in general retirement in America, Money Explained Through Vox is available on Netflix. They did one on retirement and it is 
phenomenal, phenomenal. It does an incredible breakdown on the history of retirement, like macro trends on how really there's so many people in America today who don't have enough save for retirement, why that is compared to other countries. So I think that's just like a really fun thing to watch. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please just give this video a thumbs up and hope you have a great day.